The fish keeping hobby is a roller coaster of trends. Things that are popular today probably aren't gonna be popular two years from now. And things that were popular two years ago, they're not popular today. When I started uploading this channel in 2012, it was all about African cichlids. They were everywhere. You couldn't be on YouTube for longer than 30 seconds without running into a video about African cichlids. And it was probably one of mine. But now in 2020, you'd be hard pressed to find information about African cichlids unless you're subscribed to a channel like Ben Ochart, who does wonderful African cichlid videos. If you're not a subscriber to him, you should definitely do that. He's the one that stayed true to African cichlids and good for him. Hopefully they make a huge comeback in the near future because I've got a whole tank full of absolutely gorgeous fish. So we'll have to see, but what's popular now now it's all about nanotanks. One of the interesting questions that I hear all the time is, what is a nanotank? Like, what is the definition of a nanotank? And I don't think there is one. If you ask 20 fish keepers out there, what's a nanotank? You're probably gonna get 20 different answers. But in my opinion, a nanotank is under 20 gallons. So for the purposes of this video, let's talk about tanks that are five gallons to 15 gallons. When you get to 15 or 20 gallons, that's when you're kind of getting borderline where it's maybe over a nano, what you would call a nano tank. But the definition of a nano tank is a really small tank with really small fish. But in this case, we're going to talk about five to 15 gallon aquariums. Well, if you've decided that you want to get into the world of nano tanks, you want to start keeping those little tanks on your desk or on your bookcase or tuck them into little nooks and crannies around your house. One of the first things that you're gonna ask yourself is, how am I gonna filter and heat little tiny tanks like this? Well, today I believe I have found what is the perfect answer to that question. We're gonna talk about that. So let's just stop messing around, let's get to it. Hey folks, it's John with KeepFishKeeping.com and today I want to talk about what I believe is the perfect combo heater slash filter for small nano aquariums. Now, I want to avoid any kind of confusion right off the bat here. I am not talking about one device that is both a heater and a filter. I'm talking about two independent products that are, in my opinion, the best choice when it comes to micro aquariums, these little tanks, like I said, five to 15 gallons. Both of these products that we're going to talk about today are manufactured by CJ out of Italy. Now, if you've been following this channel for any length of time, you know that I've caused quite a stir when it comes to the name CJ. I did a video a few weeks back about the shark internal canister filter, and guess what? You can hardly find sharks anywhere now because the internet has gone wild with these filters. But that's a good thing because I am a big time believer in this brand, and so I want to see people getting these in their aquariums because I do think that they work really, really well. Uh, but again, this is not really a continuation of the, the Shark because it is a completely different product, but it's similar in that it's very easy to use, it's very easy to set up, and it's very efficient. So let's talk about both of these products individually. We'll break them down. I'll tell you what comes in the box, tell you how to install them, which could not be easier. And uh, yeah, I'll just tell you everything I love about these and maybe I'll find some things I don't like. I don't know. Now let's start this off by talking about the Jolly Heater. Yeah, I don't know where the name Jolly came from. It's adorable, it's an adorable name. <laughs> All of their stuff seems to be uh, oceanic animals, sharks, whales, all this, and then Jolly. I don't know, maybe you know of a, of a deep sea creature that's named a Jolly, I don't know, but it's cute, it's, it's a Jolly. That's <laughs> <laughs> That's what this is called, but it's available in two different sizes the 10 watt, which is just a little fella It's just a little guy and then the 20 watt, which is what you would expect. It's about double the size of The 10 watt uh, don't let the wattages fool you though. These are powerful little heaters I've got one 20 watt in my 15 gallon and it does an absolutely superb job There are a lot of people that follow the rule of five watts per gallon uh, I think you can push that a little bit with these. You can have these in tanks that are larger than, uh, than what the, the box might call for, but they seem to hold up really well. Now you put a 20 watt Jolly heater in your 55 gallon, it's probably not gonna do a whole lot, but that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about 
nano tanks. There are charts on my website that'll tell you about how many degrees uh, these individual heaters should heat up specific size aquariums. So you're definitely gonna wanna check that out. But the good thing about these, they are preset to maintain the temperature right at 78, 79, maybe sometimes 80 degrees, depending on the, the ambient temperature in the room, uh, exposure to light, all of those kind of things, uh, exposure to doorways or windows that get opened frequently. Those are all gonna affect the temperature of your aquarium. I got a whole video coming out about uh, heaters in aquariums, not just about these, but just heaters in general. So be on the lookout for that. But obviously things like ambient temperature in the room is gonna affect it, but these are preset, which is one of the things that I really like about them, but I don't wanna go too far with that. I wanna talk about what comes in the box first and then we'll get into the things I like. Uh, obviously, you're gonna get your heater. Uh, this one already has a suction cup attached to it, but there are two suction cups that come with each Jolly heater. They just slide in, it really couldn't be easier. Uh, there's one on the top and one on the bottom. And these are so that you can mount this heater either on the wall of the aquarium, on the back of the aquarium, uh, or even underneath the gravel, uh, they actually designed these to not only work in aquariums that are for fish, but also for reptiles like turtles and things like that. Uh, so you can actually put these suction cups on there, suction cup it to the bottom of your aquarium, put gravel over top of it, and it'll work just fine. It's very cool. And on the topic of turtle tanks, it also comes with this, which is to prevent chewing of the wires. I don't keep any turtles, but I guess that's a problem in turtle tanks. So this little thing here, sorry about that, will wrap around the heater or the cord and protect it from the turtles chewing on it, which I think is adorable. I've never seen that. They also come with these, which is unique. I don't know that I've ever seen another heater that comes with these. And I also don't know that I would ever use them, but that's okay. Uh, it's stickers that you can put onto the heater to help it to blend in with the background. Maybe you're doing a fancy aquascape or something like that and you wanna hide it. Almost every aquascape I ever see has a black background. Uh, so this blends right in, but I don't know. You, you got something fancy going on, you wanna make it look like stone or you wanna make it look like uh, a plant, then you can do that. So that's kind of cool. Other than that, that's it. You get an instruction manual and stuff like that in the box, that's it. Nothing complicated. Uh, nothing more that comes with it. It's very, very simple. Next is the Micron internal filter. This is the answer to the question. I have a nano tank. I think the shark is too powerful, too big for that. The sharks are very powerful, very strong. This is your answer. If you're looking for something that's smaller than the shark, this is it. Uh, this process is about 65 gallons per hour, which out of this little guy right here, you wouldn't expect it to be that powerful, but it is. It definitely moves quite a bit of water. So what does it come with it? Uh, it comes with this extra sponge because the interesting thing about this, like the shark, this comes apart and you have the internal cartridge inside. Uh, obviously this comes with it too. This has your sponge and your carbon in it. Uh, kind of going old school there with the carbon and all that. It's not old school because all the manufacturers are still doing that, but that comes with it. That is pre-installed in the unit. And then it also comes with the sponge. If you don't want to use the carbon because it's a planted tank or whatever, you can put this sponge in there and basically have it be a 65 gallon per hour moving sponge filter is what that would be there. Uh, and I really like that idea because Planted nano tanks are becoming more and more popular every single day. And that's a trend I think that's gonna continue for quite some time. So that'll be perfect for that if you don't wanna have that carbon in the aquarium. And then other than that, it comes with four suction cups. Now I did a big thing about the suction cups on the shark and I had a whole bunch of people message me and say, John, geez, yeah, the suction cups are difficult, but you're making too big a deal out of it. They're not that big a deal. And it's very true. In fact, I got a lot of really good tips on how to install those suction cups easier in the sharks. But that's not even something to talk about here because these are nothing. These are super easy to get into the back of the Micron. They pop in there, it's no big deal. This is actually one of the suction cups 
from the Jolly because I didn't want to rip this open, but same suction cups on the Jolly and the Micron. There is four holes on the back. You just push the suction cup in. There's nothing more to it. it. It could not be easier and they are not difficult to get in. If you do have difficulty, warm up, don't boil it, but warm up a cup of water and it could just be hot from the tap, the hottest setting on the tap. Soak these suction cups in there for a, a few minutes, pull them out, they'll be nice and smushy and you can stick it in there. But you know what? I don't think anybody's gonna need to do that with this one. The Shark, yes, but this one, no. Super easy, they just pop right in there. Couldn't be easier. Now, I will say, gotta find negatives, right? These are powerful little suction cups. Most suction cups are, especially when you have them attached to glass. Sometimes, this is one of the things, sometimes when you pull this filter off, like if you wanna move it or whatever, uh, the suction cups will pop right out of the back of that. It's not a big deal. You pop them off, you stick them back in here. How often are you gonna be moving your filter? You're not gonna be moving it all that often. So it's really not that big of a deal, but uh, if I have to find something negative, that's one of the things I would say. But that's it, that's what comes with this. Again, simplicity is the key. You get the pre-installed cartridge, which if you wanna know how to take it out, that's how you take it out. It's, it's super easy. Uh, this pops in there. These cartridges are available, by the way, if this is what you want to use. We do sell these replacement cartridges on our website. I have not found a way to crack these open to just replace everything. I suppose you could, um, but I haven't tried it. We do sell these on the website though, and they're available other places too. So replaceable cartridges, you can definitely do that. So that's how you replace them. It, it could not be easier. Everything about this is easy. I'm gonna try to get through this video without saying the word easy 750 times like I did on the shark video, but that's what comes with it. Your four suction cups, your sponge, if you choose to use this rather than use the uh, cartridge that comes in it, and your instructions, that's it. And this one doesn't come with any fancy stickers. So to go back to the Jollies, uh, I'm not really gonna talk about installing the Jolly because I already did, I talked about it. You can put it underneath the gravel if you want to, you can hang it vertically, you can hang it horizontally if you want to. It's in the water, that's all that matters. It doesn't have to be any particular way, but what I like to do is have them right next to each other, uh, and that's how I have it in my 15 gallon over there. Got the Jolly up against the glass with the Micron right next to it. This way, the water's being pulled into here, it's pulling it right past the heater, and when it's pushing it out, it's pushing it out again. It's taking that warm water from the heater and pushing it back out. We don't really need to talk about installing it because this is the easiest thing in the world. You put it anywhere you wanna put it in the aquarium, and you plug it in, and you're done. There is no buttons, there's no switches, there's no dials, there's no anything. The only thing there is, is a small LED indicator at the top, which will tell you that it's actually on and it's running. If you remove this from the water, it automatically shuts off, which is awesome. Because how many of you, I know I've done it, have done water changes in an aquarium that has a glass heater. Those, the glass they use on those heaters, super, super thin. And you forget to submerge the heater down in the water. You pull your water out to do a water change, exposing that heater. It cuts on, it gets too hot, cold air hits it, boom, heater explodes. I've done it several times in my, a lot of years keeping fish. So yeah, that's something that I certainly don't appreciate when that happens. This is not gonna happen here because not only is it gonna automatically shut off, but it's also thermal plastic, it's not glass. So there's nothing to break if this thing is exposed and still on. But again, you don't have to worry about that because it's automatically gonna shut off if it's not submerged in water. You absolutely have to love that. Very, very simple. There's nothing to see here. It's just a little peg that goes down into the aquarium. It looks very nice, doesn't even look like a heater. Yeah, installing it, put it in the water. That's how you install this. Now with the Micron, there's a little bit more, but not really. I mean, <laughs> installing the Micron is also super easy. The first thing that you're gonna have to decide is do you wanna use the cartridge that comes with it or do you want to install the sponge rather than use the cartridge? Uh, I'm a big fan of either one. I'm not a carbon hater. In my 15 gallon, I have all artificial plants in there. So I do have the, the standard cartridge in there with the carbon and all that. I'm just a fan of carbon. I've been doing this a long time. Carbon has kind of always been a thing. But if you don't wanna do that, I get it. You wanna just use the sponge, that's good. Slide it in there like I just showed you. 
slide this whole thing back together again and you are good to go. There's only one way that it can go together. You can't put it together backwards or anything like that. Super, super easy. It just slides together. I mean, you have a little track on either side that, that kind of grab on there and there you go. It's installed, it's ready to go. You put your four suction cups on there, stick it wherever you want. Now the cool thing about this filter is you can have it oriented one of two ways. You can have it vertical, which almost looks like a little Star Wars ship. Maybe not as much as the shark, but with this little slot up here, I don't know, it makes it look like a little spaceship. Or if you want to, you can take this, turn it to the side, and actually mount the filter this way, which is really cool because you could have it up towards the top, maybe mount your jolly heater underneath it, and that's what you, I'm holding it to myself, like, like you can see it that way. That's kind of how it would look. I don't know, it's pretty nice. And then you could have this right up at the top of the water line, agitating the top or the surface of the water. Very, very cool. But either way you do it, it's gonna be the same water flow or the same amount of flow. It doesn't really matter. Very, very simple. Now, there is, well, technically two adjustments that you can make on this. Uh, the first is this one, if you wanna decide to put it horizontally or if you just wanna run it vertically, that's one adjustment. The other is right here. And this is your flow control that you have on this filter. I don't know if you can hear it. I did this with the shark. It does click. There's a lot of background noise. I don't know if you can hear that. I'm putting it up to the microphone. It does click into place. Uh, it's not hard or anything like that. But to adjust the water flow, you just slide it up or down. It, it could not be simpler. So if you do have that four gallon tank that you have your beta in, you should put it in something bigger. Four gallons, I'm probably not gonna yell at you, but let's just, for the sake of this conversation, let's say a five gallon, and you're thinking, 65 gallons per hour, geez, I don't need that much flow. You can turn this down. You're not blowing your fish all over the place. You're not blowing your plants or your shrimp or anything like that all over the place. Very, very nice. And there's, let's see, one, two, three, four, four different settings uh, that you could set it, but you can put it wherever you want. Those are the only two adjustments that you're gonna have on this uh, is, is that, the flow control and your decision of whether you wanna go vertical or horizontal. That's it, it's, there's nothing else to see here. Put your suction cups in there, stick it in the tank, plug it in, and you're done. So to talk about what I like about these products with the Jolly, again, I, I mean, I, I'm repeating myself at this point, but I like how it automatically shuts off if you take it out of the water. That's clever, it's, it's nice. Uh, even though with it being the thermoplastic, you're not gonna have to worry about it breaking or anything like that if it is plugged in and exposed to air, but that's nice. You know, you don't ever have to worry about that. You got the little LED there that'll tell you it's off. Uh, very cool, that's, I mean, that's it. I, I guess I also like the fact that you can put it under the gravel but I don't know that you can't put others under the gravel too. So, I mean, I, I don't know. Sim simple, easy to use, easy to install. Put it in, plug it in, and you're done. That's what I like about the Jolly. And again, the temperature that I have in my 15 gallon tank over there, I have the 20 watt in there. Temperature stays right around 80 degrees. And that's with a fan blowing right next to it, blowing cool air past it. I'll try to get some B-roll footage of this. The reason why I have that is because I'm one of those people that's hot all the time and I have a fan blowing on me. It looks really bad down here, but it is what it is. Um, even with that air blowing across the aquarium, it still keeps it up to temperature, which is really, really nice. Um, so yeah, it's powerful. It does the job. It does it well. It keeps the temperature consistent and everything about it is easy because there's nothing that couldn't be easy. You just plug it in. What's easier than that? So. The Micron is kind of along the same lines. Everything's very easy. Uh, I do like the fact that you have the option of the two different types of filtration, whether you wanna go uh, chemical and sponge or just sponge. I like the fact that you have that choice. Uh, again, for me, I use this because I don't have any live plants or I don't have any reason to not have carbon in the tank. But you do have this as an option and the cool thing about it is, as I said earlier, this basically makes it like a power sponge filter, uh, which sponge filters are great in a, in a tiny nano tank, uh, but if you choose to use this, 
one of the th one of the reasons why people would choose a sponge filter over something like this is because they would say, well, it's more shrimp safe or it's more fry safe. Well, here's the thing. This sponge in here is all we've got in here. So when you look at these slots here, first of all, they're very small. They're about a 16th of an inch uh, in width. So that's already good. It's not going to allow f anything with any size to it to get through there. But also if it does get through there, it just goes right into this sponge. The sponge is the first thing that it comes in contact with, not an impeller or anything like that. So if a shrimp, like a little shrimplet or a micro fry or something like that were to go in there, it's not going to get anywhere because it's going to hit that sponge. So if the flow is down enough and a fry were to get in there or a shrimplet were to get in there, they could just crawl right back out again. It wouldn't be that big of a deal. They're not going to get sucked up into the impeller because they're not going to be so small that they can navigate their way through the sponge. That just, I've just never heard of that happening. Now on the topic of impellers, uh, there are a lot of people out there that want to know, you know, how is the impeller situation? If I get a little grain of sand stuck in it and it starts making noise, how am I going to get to the impeller to get that out? It's very, very simple. You have this little trap door here. Almost looks like a little manhole cover. Stick your fingernail on here, pop this off. Super simple. There's your impeller. Uh, now the impeller, it's kind of set in this. So it's kind of tricky unless you have really small fingers to get in there and pull it out. Last time I did this, I think I either used a knife or I used some pliers. Uh, but let's see, let me grab my knife. I probably should have had this ready before uh, I wanted to do this, but there we are. Making me look like an idiot here. Come on, Micron. There we go. Super easy. I mean, if you have small enough fingers, you should be able to get in there and get it out without any problem. This is what everything looks like when it's taken apart. Uh, very, very simple. Small hole there to go onto that post. Drop your impeller back in. Clean it off, whatever you have on there. Stick it in there and you're good to go. Take your little manhole cover, stick it back on there, and you're done. It's very, very simple. Most impellers on these little internal canister filters are gonna be easy. Um, this one is, is definitely that. Uh, super simple and that's pretty much all you can do or would even need to do with this filter is uh, if you get that little grain of sand or something stuck up in the impeller which is not likely is going to happen but if it does get through the sponge and all of that and gets in there you need to clean it out it's very very simple to do i have a rack that you can see behind me here that has 12 10 gallon tanks i probably wouldn't buy 12 of these I have that running off of sponge filters, but if I had three or four tanks around the house on the kitchen counter, one on my desk, one on the bookshelf, I would absolutely use these uh, rather than sponge filters. Not that sponge filters aren't good. I love sponge filters, but I don't want to have to have a pump and a sponge at every single one of those locations. All of those things, you're running the risk of things going bad and all that kind of stuff. Pop this bad boy in there and you're good to go. It's, it's super, super easy. So yeah, that's something, uh, it brings up another point too. Uh, because when you look at this, if you go on our website right now and you look at this and you see the price, you're going to be like, well, that's a whole lot more money than a sponge filter, but it's not. It's if you compare this to a sponge filter, yes, it's considerably more, but the air pump always costs way more than the sponge filter does. So when you put those two things together, you're going to end up spending right at about the same amount of money as you would for this. So yeah, no brainer there. It shouldn't really be a money thing. It should be more of, do you like sponge filters, the way they filter? Sponge filters are great. This is not a video talking about why sponge filters suck and you should buy this instead. That's not what this is about. Sponge filters are awesome. I love them. But if you're deciding between the two, let it be the functionality of it. Let it be the appearance of it. Uh, the versatility of it, have that be the thing that decides whether you want this over a sponge filter, not the price, because they are, again, when all things considered, they're the same, right at about the same. Now, the other thing we're doing on the website too that you'll definitely want to check out is we are offering these as a combo, either with the 10 gallon, 10 gallon, 10 watt, 
or 20 watt jollies, you're gonna save like a dollar. We haven't figured it out exactly yet, but you'll save like a dollar if you buy the two as a combo or you can buy them individually. Now that's one thing I, I'm glad I thought of that for uh, just for the purposes of this conversation. There are two different Micron filters available. Um, we only have one and the reason why is because they're so close in size it really didn't make sense to have the other one. In fact, I'm not even quite sure why CJ makes the other one because this is 65 gallons an hour, uh, an hour. The other one is like 59 or something like that. It's like really close to it. So why even have that? That's almost like having a, a, a 20 watt jolly and a 19 watt jolly. It's like, why would you do that? They're so close in size. We just decided to load up on the 65 gallon per hour, uh, not the one that's actually called the Micron Nano. This is just the Micron. So if you saw the Micron Nano available on other sites or whatever, and you were confused about that, yes, that is out there. We're not gonna carry it though, because they are so close in size. So yeah, if you wanna save a buck or maybe two, I don't know yet, uh, you can buy these as a combo, but if you don't wanna buy them as a combo, if you just want the Micron, or maybe you're using a sponge filter, but you definitely wanna add a heater, you can buy these individually and that's fine. So I don't wanna go on and on and on about these. Obviously, I am a fan of these. I would not have them on my website if I wasn't. If you're interested in getting more information about these, you can check them out on our website. Basically, all of the information that CJ has available for these, I have on my website because I literally copied and pasted it from the CJ website. So. Anything you want to know about these, it is right there on the website. Of course, you can email me at kgtropicals at gmail.com if you have questions that you just can't get answered on the website. I don't know what those would be, but hey, you can email me there if you have any other questions about it. So that's about it. There's not a whole lot more to say about these. If you're looking for that solution to the problem of how to filter a tiny nano tank, here's your answer. We've just spent the last 20 minutes or whatever talking about it. So thank you for your patience as I am repeating myself over and over and over again. Thank you so much for watching. Keepfishkeeping.com. They're on there right now. We got a bunch of them so that we don't run out immediately like we did with the sharks. So go check those out there and anything else that you might be interested in. Thank you so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you again some other day. <laughs>